Gamers, you are watching What You Gaming On, the YouTube video where every episode we're going to start by asking you, the listener, the viewer, what you're gaming on. Tell me what game you're playing, what you like about it, what you don't like about it in the comments of this video, on any of my social media, or email me what you're gaming on, and I, your answer will be featured in an upcoming episode of What You Gaming On. Lately, I've been gaming on Shadow of War, or Middle Earth Shadow of War, and I would say it's about time that I'm playing this game. I bought this game when it first came out, and I played it a little bit. I, pretty much the exact thing happened with Middle Earth Shadow of Mortar. I bought it when it came out, I played it a little bit, didn't really grab my attention as much of a Lord of the Rings fan as I, I claim to be. It didn't really grab my attention. I came back to it months later and really enjoyed it, and the same thing happened here. I bought it, put it aside, playing it now, thoroughly enjoying it. And I feel the best way to describe Shadow of War, well, I mean, the Shadow, the Middle Earth Shadow series, I feel the best way to describe it is it's Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood meets Risk within the Lord of the Rings lore. It's very, like, the combat and the actual gameplay of it is very similar to Assassin's Creed too. You're you're fighting off enemies, you have different reaction commands to, you know, block and repost from the different sword attacks that are coming at you. But it also, just like Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood, it, you have the ability to recruit other orcs, you get to send orcs on different missions, and then they, you know, really, in, they really start to kind of lean toward risk territory when you're sending armies of orcs against this other outpost, or you're defending from another outpost, and they even have it set online where you can go invade other players' outposts, and they can do the same to you. And honestly, as much as I enjoy the game, it's kind of this recruitment of orcs, or at least sending orcs on missions, that I don't really have an interest in while I'm playing it. Like, I like the core gameplay. I like the movement actions. I like the fighting, com I like the combat. I like the fighting mechanics. That That's the part of the game I really like. But when it comes to the choosing your captains and sending them off to different things and strategize and, you know, coming up with a strategy of how best to do this, that's where I really lose interest and I'm not even that good at it. When I tried to start playing the game a little more strategically, I, I just, I, I died a lot more than I did when I was just playing the game. And like even the, the captain's missions that you can go on, they're fairly, they're, they're more or less randomly generated because the captains uh, with their nemesis system where they kind of introduce new orcs and new captains that you fight and then they make a name for themselves and they remember the last time you fought and they remember, you know, if you kill them, they'll come back and talk about how you killed them, but they were able to brought back because of magic. And it's a really interesting system, but the actual commanding of orcs, that, that's the part of the game that I'm just not all that interested in. I like the core gameplay, and I really feel like going, af going after the captain's missions in the game is kind of pointless because you run in, or at least I did, I run in to more orc captains and recruit them easier, just randomly running around from place to place. I find that to be easier than going on the actual missions because I'm going to run into those captains at some point anyway. Just like, and just like God, just, just playing it this week, there was one orc that, like, he was a lowly grunt orc, or he was an olog, which is one of, like, the giant war trolls, that he killed me randomly, and he broke my sword, and his name was Oz, was Ozrans, I posted a picture of him on my Instagram, and actually, well, I'll, I'll get to this part, uh, I went after him, he broke my sword, he killed me, so I went after him, got my sword back, and I killed him, and I, and I managed to kill him, and then randomly shows up again, and for like the entire night I was playing this game that night, we kept having run-ins over and over, and one of us would either, would at some point in the battle have to escape, either he would run off, or I would run off, and neither of us were able to catch us, and literally it took hours before I finally killed this guy, and now I'm towards the end of the game, and he came back again. He's all messed up. I've killed him three times at this point. And he's all messed up. He's like a, a zombie troll at this point. And I did finally kill him again. But just he just kept coming up. And it's that kind of thing that really makes the Nemesis system within the Middle Earth series really unique. The fact that these orcs are kind of randomly generated, but they remember their encounters. They remember your encounters. They they talk about the things that you already did to them, that the things they've already gone through. So it's really it's a really interesting system that they've implemented into this game. 
But using it for, like, the captains, I, I just, I'm not really all that interested in it. But at the same time, it also adds some pride whenever you do have a captain and or a captain and you see them like take out another guy or you have a bodyguard who sa who's saved your life multiple times and then you see that bodyguard killed and you're like, ah, oh, and you, you kind of get upset. It's like, you killed my bodyguard. I have to enact, I have to enact vengeance upon you now and I'll hunt you down across the map and find you for killing my bodyguard. So it like it, it's it, it's a game that there is somewhat of a story, but the bulk of the story and the bulk of the characters really are these orcs that you encounter, your enemies, both your enemies and your followers, these different orcs that you encounter, because they all have really strong, uh, not all totally individual, but all very very unique or at least very strong personalities as you get to know them, the amount of times you run into them, the amount of times they save save your life, the amount of times that they betray you. Some orcs are even going to be like, you just killed my bro blood brother. Now I have to kill you. Even though I, I swore allegiance to you, I now have to kill you. And it, it, get, it can get pretty emotional. But just, just talking about Lord of the Rings, indulge me for a moment, just talking about the Lord of the Rings as a series and i really feel like re regardless of considering myself a lord of the rings fan i feel like i like the idea of lord of the rings more than i actually like the series at least as far as the books are concerned and i haven't read all of the lord of the rings series like i'm talking about the appendices and the different histories and everything that tolkien wrote about it but i have read uh fellowship of the ring two towers to completion and i read return of the king up until Pelennor Fields, until I, I, I finally, I really just had to put it down because there was so much there. Tolkien in his books put just so much. Like the Fellowship would be wandering and they would pass a tree. And this tree was planted by blah, blah, blah. Of the race of blah, blah, blah. And the race's history of blah, blah, blah. And songs are written about this race and blah, blah, blah. Now we're going to sing those songs in another language of blah, blah, blah. And all just so much like little intricate details that while written very beautifully, there's just so much to absorb when trying to get through those series to this day i haven't finished return of the king and i don't and i don't really plan on it which is something i actually like the movies for uh, i i i think the movies did a lot better job of just telling the story of lord of the rings i mean a perfect example is tom bombadil tom bombadil was a druid that in the beginning of fellowship of the ring the the hobbits ran into and they spent time with them singing and eating and learning about the forest and in the end he gave them the swords that they then go on to use and it's 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 not a it's not a not beautifully written chapter i mean or chapters it felt like chapters maybe it really was just one chapter it's not that it's poorly written it's just it, it's all fluff it's all fluff. There's no real point to it aside from the the hobbits getting their swords. And how does the movie fix that? They have Aragorn go here. Here's a sword. Done. Job done. You have your swords. And I appreciate them. I appreciate Peter Jackson for simplifying a lot of what the Lord of the Rings trilogy had to say that they didn't that they didn't have to do every single little detail that is explained intricately in the trilogy of books. Which is something, which is something that I actually prefer. If I'm if I'm reading a, if I'm reading Tolkien, I actually prefer reading The Hobbit because it's not as intricately woven. There's not as much histories that you have to that you have to wade through just to get to the main story of The Hobbit. And you know, at the same time, this is a book that was written for children. So that's probably why it's that way. Which maybe says that maybe that says a lot about me from liking from liking a children's book over the actual trilogy of Lord of the Rings. But it's just I like I feel that Lord of the Rings is so complicated. But as complicated as Lord of the Rings, as Tolkien's writing can be in Lord of the Rings, there are also moments where it's just inconsistent. Like, you know, he has all of these races that he's written the entire histories of, he's written all of the languages, he's written all of the songs for these for these elves, for these dwarves, and then there's Mount Doom. Or a character who has this beautiful name that it means all these different things in his language and he has all these different characteristics and then there's Treebeard, who is a tree with a beard. And I admit, I didn't realize those inconsistencies until I saw this meme point that out and I was like, oh my god, that's 100% accurate. But you really have to give Tolkien credit for 
because of the just amount of detail he puts into the Lord of the Rings series and all the appendices and histories, just the amount of detail he puts in these books, he has a large role in making the fantasy genre what it is today. Like, there's so much inspiration. There is so much inspiration from Tolkien, from Lord of the Rings, in almost all facets of fantasy at this point. So as as detailed as it is and difficult to read the books that he wrote, the people who have who have read them have gone on to make some amazing fantasy series that are at least have inspiration from Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. So you really do have to give credit to Tolkien for just making fantasy, fa- making the fantasy genre or ha- playing a part in making the fantasy genre what it is today. And Lord of the Rings, you know, it's not something that was ever unpopular, at least not since the movies. Like, the movies definitely brought it into the larger realm of pop culture, and since then, it stayed fairly relevant from making the Lord of the Rings trilogy and making the Hobbit trilogy, which I have to admit, I really enjoyed the Hobbit trilogy of movies. I know that they changed some things, they definitely added things that didn't happen in the Hobbit, but it was more things that were like exposition and backstory that are setting things up for the War of the Ring and the future trilogy. Uh, But I did. I really enjoyed the Hobbit trilogy of films. And even now, they're making... uh, Amazon, Amazon is producing a Lord of the Rings series, which I believe they said will be taking place both before and during the War of the Ring. And even video games like Shadow, like Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War, you know, these aren't the first great Lord of the Rings games. Like, there were... They did one that was Fellowship of the Ring that I didn't think was that good, and then they made two. They made two more that were fantastic video games. They, and these are the games I desperately want backwards compatible on the Xbox One, and that was The Two Towers and Return of the King. They were basically just fighting games, but, oh, man, they were so just absolutely good games. So I would love... They really need to, like, remaster those for current gen systems or make them backwards compatible. They need to bring those back because those those games were really great. But Shadow of War, Shadow of Mordor, both are just really solid games. But going back and talking about Shadow of War, and this is something I actually completely forgot about until I was playing the game again, is there was a huge controversy over the Shadow of War uh, microtransactions, which I feel like microtransactions has been a common theme in some of the last in some of the last uh, what you gaming on videos I've done because there is just so much to say about it. They basically what it was it wasn't as much. I mean, it kind of wasn't, kind of wasn't. They had loot boxes. They had loot boxes in the game where you could buy them by grinding out to get the currency in game or buying it with real money. And then you would get followers and ge- or orc followers and gear that would help you beat the game because, and I haven't gotten this far in the game just yet, so I haven't reached where this was, but people felt there was a paywall between when you kind of complete the main story but then have to go on to do like an epilogue type of type of story and to do that you had to like grind out to get the best gear the best followers the best everything so that you could complete the game and there was a paywall that if you weren't able to get these things which you know people tried and you know realized how just ridiculously and unnecessarily hard it was to grind out to get this equipment to get these followers than it was if you just bought the bought the items on the marketplace and that's and they made a big deal about it. This wasn't just some troll talking about it on a 4chan forum. This was a widespread controversy of people having this problem and and speaking out about it. And I have to give the developers of Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor credit for listening to this for listening to these complaints and you know, when I started the game, what reminded me of this controversy is, like, I started the game, haven't played it in months, and one of the, like, update notifications I got for it was, we heard your complaints, we're sorry we screwed that up, we've changed it, and we fixed it, we, we you know, thank you for letting us know what the problem was, we since fixed it, and we hope you have a much better experience in Shadow of War. And so far, I am. So, I really, I do have to give credit to the developers of Shadow of War and the producers of Shadow of War for not only fixing the problem, but admitting they had a problem and going about to fix it. And I really feel that's something that it, it 
adds a lot of respect, at least for me, for video game companies for doing that. You know, it's very rare that a big company like that can say, yeah, we screwed up and now we're going to fix it. You know, the, the big company that really needs to do it is, and I, this is the first time I've talked about this, is EA. You know, the controversy, this controversy was almost as bad as the Star Wars Battlefront loot boxes that were essentially paid to win. Um, and EA, you know, they, they changed Battlefront 2 and then almost immediately said, yeah, we heard your complaints and we changed it in Battlefront 2, but we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep making this mistake. We're going to keep making this choice that screws over a lot of games just for blatant, just for blatant, 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 just for greed, just for greedy purposes. That's the only reason they're doing it. And they just keep digging that hole and... You know, I get that they're a business and, you know, video game companies, they're a business. They need to make money. But I really think it's a more effective way to make money by building a strong and confident relationship with your customer base, with your gamers, with your players, the people who are purchasing your items, than just screwing them over because you know they're going to come back and pay for stuff anyway. Um, like, like EA would not have the problems it has if they would just admit that, yeah, we screwed up and we've learned our lesson and they're going to stop doing it. Instead, they say, we've heard your complaints, we've done what you wanted us to do, but we're going to keep screwing you over in the future, just so you know. And that, that, that's not what the, what the developers for, um... For Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War, or for Shadow of War, did I? I, I think it's uh, like WB Games and Zenimax are the big studios for that. I think uh, I should have I should have wrote this down before doing this. Um, but I do. I give a lot of I give a lot of credit, and a lot of respect to the developers behind Shadow of War because they stepped up, they admitted their problem, and they went out to fix it. So. Big respect to them, but Shadow of War, it's been a great game. It's been a good experience. There's been some times that were just incredibly difficult. I'm stuck at a port now, at a point now towards the end of the game that I, I finally just rage quit. And I just, I'm, I'm not going to pick it up for the rest of the day. I'm going to go back and I'm going to play something else. Uh, but I just, I couldn't do it anymore. But it's a great game. Check it out. Um... If you've played Shadow of War, um, but if you've played Shadow of War, let me know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments and follow me on all the internets. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it around so others can join in the conversation. And if you want to be featured in an upcoming video of what you gaming on, make sure to leave the game you're playing and what you like about it, what you don't like about it in the comments, and your answer will be featured in an upcoming episode of What You Gaming On. And if you want to read any of the gaming or movie or TV reviews that I write, go to www.treyguillotine.com and subscribe to my channel to geek out some more. Keep on gaming, gamers.